Hi, Ray. Well, uh, hello, uh, friends and members of St. Martin Lutheran Church. This is Pastor Jim with our Thursday devotion. And uh, uh, some thoughts before we begin today. Uh, good afternoon to you, Ray. Um, hi, Natalie. Is uh, a, a prayers, prayers out for Adam Wiggett, uh, who is recovering at home from an injury. Uh, uh, prayers for Lori Quinn, uh, who is recovering at home from from illness. Um, hello to everyone. And uh, prayers for, for our country, right? Um, as we uh, try to heal. I can't even say from an election because the election technically isn't over yet, but uh, hopefully we'll get there. And it, it's fitting this week that uh, the psalm we're doing, we're doing Psalm number 90. Um, so if you're uh, following along in your Bibles, uh, you can turn to Psalm 90. And you know, this this week, the, the scriptures that we have read from 1 Thessalonians 5, uh, from Matthew 25, you know, 1 Thessalonians is, is Paul telling the Thessalonians how they should live to be ready for Christ's imminent return, which means they should stay alert and active. And in the parable that we studied yesterday, the parable of the talents, uh, Jesus telling a, a kingdom parable about how the children of God uh, will use the talents that we have been given in proportion to, to what God has given us, that we'll use him for the glory of the kingdom. And then Psalm 90, which, which deals with sort of these overreaching themes of uh, who God is, who we are, and then how we should live. And I know for me, whenever I'm looking at something, you know, theologically and I'm studying it, you know, the, the question I'm always asking myself is, well, how does this apply to me today and how can I put it into practice? Because I, I tend to be rather thick sometimes and I don't get it. And I like things spelled out easily for me. Well, just, just, just tell me what I have to do, God, right? Just tell me what I have to do and we'll do it. Um, so let's get to it. Our reading for today is Psalm number 90, a prayer of Moses, the man of God. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations before the mountains were brought forth or ever you had formed the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You return man to dust and say, return, O children of man. For a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday when it is past or as a watch in the night. You sweep them away as with a flood. They are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed. In the evening it fades and withers. For we are brought to an end by your anger. By your wrath we are dismayed. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. For all our days pass away under your wrath. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The years of our life are 70, or even by reason of strength 80, yet their span is but toil and trouble. They are soon gone and we fly away. Who considers the power of your anger and your wrath according to the fear of you? So teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, and as for as many years as we have seen evil. Let your work be shown to your servants, and your glorious power to their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Well, uh, as I mentioned before, this psalm, uh, it's a psalm of Moses, the only psalm attributed to, to Moses himself. And, you know, they, there's really no mention of a specific time or a specific incident that, that moves Moses to write this. Although, um, I mean, it, it's likely that it, it's written, the historical setting would be Numbers 20 or, or the, the children of Israel in the wilderness. Uh, it could have been the death of his sister Miriam. Um, it could have been his own sin in striking the rock in the wilderness uh, instead of speaking to it, and his own sin, pride, vanity, anger, which which uh, 
did not allow him to go into the promised land. It could have been the death of his, his brother Aaron. We're not quite sure. But again, the, the psalm itself has, has three points. Number one, who is God? Who are we? And then lastly, how should we live? So verses one to two focus on, on who is God. That Lord, you have been our dwelling place for all generations. Moses writes in verse 1, that God is a dwelling place. And another uh, translation for that word, that Hebrew word, is God is our, our refuge uh, in all generations. That Moses understood that God's help to his people uh, didn't begin just with the exodus from Egypt, um, but from their, their very beginnings uh, with Abraham, with Noah in creation, that God has been their dwelling place. And, and also the eternal nature of God. Now, it's interesting, and in, in, when you look at apologetics or you look at uh, arguments against Christianity, um, you know, people will sometimes ask, well, when was God created, right? Well, I, I, our Christian doctrine teaches us that God was not created. He always was, as well as Christ always was. Eternally begotten of the Father, we confess in the Nicene Creed that Christ always existed, uh, Christ participated in creation itself, that God the Father always existed, and that, and that Moses writes, before the mountains were brought forth, or the earth was formed, that God, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God, that before anything existed, God was, and which, which helps make sense then, right, of Moses' conversation with God. When God asks him to be the mouthpiece for Israel, to go to Pharaoh and to declare and demand that he let his people go, God, Moses says, well, when I go to the people and they ask me your name, what am I to say your name is? And of course, God's name is I am. He exists. That's, that's God's name. That God before time was. And I like how C.S. Lewis describes sort of the eternal omnipotence of God and how God exists within time in that, you know, God's the author of the story and the, sto the author at any time can insert themselves in the story. That for God, you know, the past and the present and the future all exist at the same time. That God can step out of time. And, and, and that, so in verse 4, when Moses says, for a thousand years are in in your sight are but as yesterday when it's past, that helps make that, that sort of difficult for our difficult, finite, linear minds. You know, for us, time is a, is a, is a one-way street, right? And uh, it, it's, it's a straight line. There was yesterday, there's today and tomorrow, but for God, all of those things exist simultaneously. And so if verse 1 and 2 are about who God is, with verse 3, we begin, and Moses talks about, well, who are we? And he begins in verse 3, you return man to dust and say, return, O children of men. It's this reminder that we even reread re in Genesis. And it's, it's a focus, of course, in Ash Wednesday that we are dust and to dust we are to return. And then in verse 4, for a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday, you sweep them away as a flood. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed. In the evening it fades and withers. That like grass which grows up, right? Moses uses this, this poetic picture to describe God in time. That God's sight a thousand years is just like yesterday. That like a watch in the night, like a flood, like, like a night of sleep. And, and in verse 7 then, so again, who are we? Well, in verse 7, we are brought to an end by your anger. By your wrath we are dismayed. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in light of your presence. Now think about it. If, if this psalm was written during the time when the children of Israel were wandering in the desert, think of what, what Moses had to deal with. Now if you remember, God's judgment upon Israel after their many, many different rebellions, 10 separate rebellions recorded in the book of Exodus and the book of Numbers, beginning with right in the parting of the Red Sea all the way to the point 
where the, the people had constantly said, we just wish we were dead. And finally, God says, well, I'm going to grant you your wish. In fact, anyone 20 years and older is, will not enter the promised land. You will wander in the desert for 40 years until that generation has passed away. So, so Moses had to endure. Uh, how many, think about how many funerals. Estimates are that when the Israelites left Egypt, there was anywhere between one in three million. One in three million. So if you take uh, at least 50% of that population that died in the wilderness, that what Moses had to endure, how many deaths? And so when he says, you have set our sins, our iniquities before you, our secret sins, that we are brought to an end by your anger, uh, he fully understands what that is. That's not just a simple confession for Moses. He lived that. And in verse 9, he says, all our days pass away under your wrath. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The years of our life are 70, or even by reason of strength, 80, yet their span is but toil and trouble. You know, all our days pass away in your wrath, uh, and the days of our life are 70. Maybe we get to 80. You know, Moses lived to be 120 years old. Um, but even the other, you know, the other writers during this time period, they say the average lifespan was about 70. Not that much different today. Um, 70 to 80, and I, I read this interesting story of a, a group of guys who had gotten together for, it was their 50th class uh, reunion from high school, and one of them, you know, said something like, well, you know, if, if 80 is the lifespan, you know, I'm, I'm 60, I'm in the fourth quarter of life, and, and that led them to a discussion about all the wonderful things they could do in this final quarter of life, if you will. Um, and then Moses writes, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. You know, it, it's, it's a poetic description of, in a sense, the, the futility of, of a life lived without God. And, and of course, in the book of Ecclesiastes, this theme is, is picked up and, and dealt with in depth. And that is, you know, life without God is, is complete vanity and a chasing after the wind. Uh, without God, uh, without our Lord Jesus Christ, what purpose is there in life because you just die and rot in the ground? Literally nothing you do means anything if God doesn't exist. Of course, we know he exists, and so our life has purpose and meaning. And then in verse 12, so teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. So apparently the, the idea that life is short is something that we have to be taught and of course, the older we get, I think the closer we get to this idea. But Moses is, is likening wisdom to the numbering of our days, that, that our time is short. If, if the average lifespan is 70, 80 years old, maybe we're lucky and we get into our 90s and even 100. The very fact of the matter is, is that that time is short. And then while we're thinking about that, then in this last part of the psalm, Moses is going to say, well, he's told us who, who God is, that he has existed from eternity, who we are, that without God, we are nothing but objects of wrath to him. Um, without Christ, uh, we get nothing but wrath, that Christ has saved us from the anger and wrath of God, and that our lives are short. And then in this last portion, well, how should we live? Well, this is how we should live that we may rejoice and be glad in all our days, verse 14, that we may be glad as many uh, days as you have afflicted us, that your work be shown to your servants, that your glorious power be shown to us. And finally, in verse 17, let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us. Establish the work of your hands upon us. Establish the work of your hands. That, that this, this final prayer, what are we to do? We're to do the works of the Lord with our hands and with our feet and with our mouth. Uh, you know, beautiful are the feet, right, who bring the good news of God. Uh, normally, I don't know about you, but I don't, when I think of feet, I don't think they're beautiful. But yet, Scripture tells us that beautiful are the feet that carry the word of God. So God is eternal. We are from dust and we're destined to return to dust. And so what are we supposed to do about it today? Well, we pray that the work of God be manifested in our lives in a real way. And as, as another theologian once said, you know, it's one thing to say you're a Christian and to be a Christian, but does anybody know it? <laughs> and can people see it? Well, our hope is that people do know it.
and they can see it. And uh, just the, you know, this reflecting on the eternal and, and, and mighty power of God, uh, the, the hymn we're going to do today is uh, uh, How Great Thou Art. O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the works thy hand hath made, I see the stars, I hear the mighty thunder, I pour through displayed then sings my soul my Savior God to me how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my Savior Forest glades I wander, I hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees. When I look down from lofty mountain grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze. And sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home. What joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my God how Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Amen. Well, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I hope you're able to join us for worship this Sunday uh, in person or, or online. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Receive the Lord's blessing. Be a blessing to others. I love you guys, and uh, we'll see you all real soon. God bless.